Okay then guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Moon Veil Katana Sword. Now this thing is pretty OP and if you guys are in that meta right now where dual katana swords are the way to go, then the Moon Veil is one you definitely want to get your hands on. This thing is absolutely mental and inside of the guide for this you will have to take out a boss. Now it's not overly difficult, although for those of you guys if you are quite early on in the game, it's going to be a little bit challenging so please bear that in mind before you go for this run. Make sure you watch the video before you follow it along. With that being said, the Moon Veil Katana Sword, let's go and get to the map. Now we're going to be starting off just here at Gale Tunnel and this is going to be just east of Limgrave and it's a really really easy location to get to. We're going to be starting off just here and we're going to show you guys exactly how to get to it and if you want to get to this location this is where it is from the Limvale map guide just in the top right corner. Make your way over and we can skedaddle on. Now make sure that you guys are on mount as you are going to need to get through. Some of the adds in this area are going to be a little bit stronger and make sure you don't venture too far to the left hand side because there is a blood finger which will come ahead and grab you. So we're going to make our way over to this dragon wall right here and we're going to jump over the right hand side making sure that we're hugging the right wall to stay away from any adds that may be there. Scaling this bit here is a little bit frustrating so just be careful how you manage to get your way up but it is possible. At this point I wasn't even aware that you can double jump with a horse so you learn something new every day. Anywho, you want to go all the way down to here, you'll see the gravestones on your right. You want to make your way down to the left hand side and work your way around, hugging the side wall quite nicely. Once you do get around to there, you are going to want to make your way into the ruin just underneath you and you're going to see that there is going to be a grey site straight away. Make sure you grab this, it's going to give you a decent safe point so that if you do die, you can always just return to here and progress as normal. There will be two ads in the doorway, so make sure you take those out to begin with. And then you can start scaling downwards, which is going to be a nice, easy method as we have to go down the platforms that roam around the downward tunnel. Please be careful because it is a long way down, so if you jump straight down the middle, it will take you out. So make sure you're scaling down the sides and you'll always have to look in through the crevices on the side panels just to make sure that you don't miss anything that could be hiding inside of there, such as smithing stones or anything like that. Now once you do manage to make your way down to the bottom, you are going to have a cool little grey site at the bottom with the summoning area on the right hand side. We're going to make our way through right now and see exactly where the location guide is. With this, you don't actually have to take out any of the ads on the way through. You can run all the way through really, really easily and avoid absolutely everything. Majority of them have swords, so don't panic as long as you can get past them quite quickly. They're not going to come after you too much afterwards. Make sure you grab the loot on the way through as the glintstone scraps are going to be something you may need later on in the game. And then once we get through to here, you will see the boss door on the right hand side. We're not going to go straight into that because just past here, past this cracked pot, is another grey site. This is going to be the easiest way if you are dying at the boss just to keep rinsing and repeating. Now once you get in, this is the Beast Magma Worm right here, and he is a bit of a tank. Now I did find that using magic or crystal was the easiest method for me personally. Obviously being a mage, this was something that I really wanted to do, just because the effect generally has a really good effect on him. Although you can use the method that you want to use other than fire. If you use any sort of fire effect, it doesn't do anything to him. He's a bloody magma worm, it's kind of self-explanatory. But you are going to go ahead and take this bad boy out. And once you do, he will drop some awesome goodies for you guys. And as you can see, we have got the Dragon Heart and the Moon Veil Katana, and it is just that simple. This was a pretty easy guide and a quite a quick one. We're going to bring the statistics up for you stat nerds out there, so you can see exactly what this Moon Veil Katana does look like and what exactly it requires to get your hands on it. You do need a 12 strength, a 23 
intellect and a 18 dexterity to be able to wield it completely and use all of its abilities. It has a passive effect of causing blood loss buildup and this thing is a pretty damn OP. This is one of your builds you are definitely going to want to have if you are running maybe the samurai or you're just enjoying the dual katana method at the moment with more of a melee character. I definitely advise grabbing hold of it. Now, that's all we've got time for today. Hopefully you have enjoyed. If you have, slap that like button, subscribe if post notifications turned on. I appreciate all your faces, guys. But as always, up until the next time, I'll see you in the clouds.